Welcome back, everybody. We are joined now by psychotherapist Lynn Lyons as we discuss the deadly Nashville school shooting. Lynn, let's talk about parents of kids in their teens now. They have access to information the second that it happens. How should parents approach conversations with their teens about what is happening? Yeah, so this is something that's that's become so common to them. There are a few things that I would say I am concerned about as a therapist. One is that it is becoming so commonplace. It is a part of their routine. They hear it. I don't want teens to actually feel um, sort of totally disconnected from these kind of tragedies. On the other hand, having social media, I think what we do want to have kids pay attention to and what we should talk to our teenagers about is that how much are they watching this? How much are they seeing it over and over again? Can they be particular about the social media, the videos, the images that they're exposing themselves to? Because it can be too much. We know that when we're looking at kids that feel anxious and tend to feel more depressed, that one of the things that, that goes into that is a feeling of hopelessness or not being able to do anything about it. So one of the things I think parents can talk to their teenagers about is on the micro level in the macro level. On the micro level, what are the things that you're going to do to make sure that you're not getting overwhelmed by this news? But on the macro level, what are, what are the steps that you can take? What are the things that you can do? Who are the adults perhaps that you need to talk to about what can be done about this? People feel better when they feel useful, when they are doing something meaningful, when they feel like they're making a difference. And I think that if you have a teenager that is really upset about this, that it, it is a great opportunity for you to talk about what kind of action they might take. It generally makes kids feel better when they feel like they're being useful, when they feel like they're taking action versus when they feel like there's just nothing they can do, which is a really reasonable way for them to feel at this point. You know, Lynn, teenagers are, are in that angsty period of sort of maybe mistrusting adults in the first place. Mm -hmm. How would you approach a teenager who just doesn't feel like the adults around them are doing enough to stop school shootings? Well, quite honestly, I would say you're right. Um, and I would say to them, knowing that that's what's going on and knowing that that's how you feel, let's see what we can do. Let's see if there is a letter we can write. Let's see if there's something uh, that you can read about. Let's see if there is some way, if you want to get politically active about this. Um, the, the, the problem with this situation is that unlike other things that we talk to kids about to manage their mental health, we talk about, are you exercising? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you hanging out with your friends? There's nothing they can do about this. Um, and so it, I certainly would want them to continue to do those things for themselves to, to take care of their own self, but also how are you going to stay connected to other people as you do this? Having conversations about it, having open conversations about the, the feelings that they're having and the frustration that they're having is really important. The one thing that we don't want to do with teenagers is, is to invalidate them, to tell them that it's not their concern, to tell them that it's not going to happen to them. They're not going to believe us. We see that it happens in all sorts of different types of schools. It's happening all over the country. So, so really validating them and seeing how we can get them actively involved in doing something about it is a good way to protect their own mental health through this. Lynn, great job. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.